four and a half pound lump of clay compared to the earlier platter, which was three and a half pounds. Here we go with a four and a half pound lump of clay being made into a large platter. You'll see that the base goes almost all the way to the edge of the bat. So at four and a half pounds, uh, I would like to talk a little bit about how things are centered because this is, it's a lot of clay and uh, there are some points here that uh, might not come up on the smaller amounts. So uh, the first uh, thing to do is pat it on the wheel as symmetrically as you can. And this first gesture at the clay is really gentle and sort of downward, just to make sure that it's stuck. And then uh, you have here the usual sort of double hand squeezing up grip. You can have them at uh, nine and three numbers on a clock face if you happen to be pretty strong. But let me show you uh, a way to get a little bit more leverage. If you look at the marks I'm making at 12 and 6, and then the marks at 7 and 11, the 7 down here at the, at the base is where you can anchor your left hand and push outward toward the 11. This gives you a lot of leverage pushing into the clay with, uh, the in, on the incoming side. And so here you'll see I'm just pushing into the clay to show you it rises up a fair amount if you get that leverage in the right place and aim pretty low. The left hand is never alone, of course. The right hand is all the way around, opposite it, around where the two would be on a clock face. And it's that pair of hands from that position that uh, can cone up the clay and make it a little bit easier. This downward gesture is also pretty popular when you're centering large amounts of clay, and there's nothing terribly new to say here that uh, your teachers won't have already said. But there's a couple things I want to mention to point out. Um, on the way down, you're going to see a way of thinking of the clay in a top half and a bottom half so that you can get the clay to not only shorten but widen at the base. And this means that you're going to avoid a mushroom problem. So when I lean out on the clay, look at the top half versus the bottom half. And you'll see that before my hands get down there, the clay is already widening. Now it shouldn't do that unless I'm touching it. And the reason it is doing that, that it's very useful, is that I'm pushing outward and away on the top half of the clay. So it's not only getting shorter, it's being compressed uh, at an angle. It is as though that original column you make, that cone you make, is being bent in half away from you. And a, a, a reminder that I try and give uh, people sometimes is that uh, you don't want a met mushroom. This is a problem. Uh, you see how it forms that edge there. And so that's happening when you're doing uh, half of what you need correctly. The half you're getting correct is that you need to press it from the ceiling. But the problem is that there's no uh, restraining force on the side. And so uh, if it starts to happen, kind of prevent it and see what you can do, like here, you're very gently bending the clay away from you, taking that top half and bottom half, and imagining that you're bending the clay in half away from you, and the clay will build up on itself in a convenient way. Another metaphor I have for this is, imagine that the machine, the wheel you're throwing on, is on casters. And I've told you, you got to push the machine away from your chair. But the only thing you can touch when you do that is the clay. And I think that that's going to add for you the outward pressure that's needed on large amounts of clay, like four and a half pounds. Well, here we go with the disc making. You'll see in the earlier two videos that I've made in this particular series that I make a big flat disc and then I take the edge and make it into the wall. The first disc making gesture is where I take my hand really, really flat and line up the knuckle of my, of my pinky around the center and then I push the flat of my hand downwards and then towards me. And this is making a really big flat disc with, a, with the broadest gesture I have. This, you don't have to be terribly strong, but you might have to be patient. And so if you see, each time I go to the edge, I don't quite go all the way. And here is a, a, another way to bite a little bit more into the surface 
This is taking the thumb of your left hand and using the curvature of that thumb to make a little bit of a dent and the strength from the right hand balled up behind it and pulled towards you. Um, I tend to pull not just toward me but a little bit to the left. And you see now the clay is almost to the edge of the bat and so we kind of have to stop. But note that this is only have to be a limit on the base of the plate. When we make it taller it can extend past. So here I'm taking a sponge to uh, secure the edge and I'm doing a little bit of fussing here with the sponge. Another way of making the plate surface a little bit flatter is to use a sponge. The sponge adds water and it diffuses the fingerprint so that you have a little bit more control. I'm just fussing over the surface here. It's not the final one because I, I tend to do most of the... I have already done most of the flattening, which is what I like. But I'm not really worried about the transition from the floor to the wall because the wall doesn't exist yet. And I won't know what I, what I have for a wall until it actually happens. And you'll see that in a few minutes. So now that the edge is done, I want to measure it and compare it to the earlier two measurements. There's the two and a half pound bowl measurement and the three and a half pound plate. And there is the edge of the four and a half pound uh, disc before they become, before they get walls. And so it's a good bit bigger. So here is the sponge. Uh, um, here is the rib being used to flatten things out and get a little bit more surface uh, flatness before the walls happen because sometimes it's a little bit awkward to, uh, to do it after the walls exist. Um, I admit on largest plates I'm going back and forth between several types of things that don't really have to happen in any kind of order. How perfect is the flatness of the bowl of the plate at this point? Uh, it's going to be kind of up to you. So here is the sponge. You leave it as low as you can. You cup your hand over the rim and then push inward with the sponge and it's going to undercut that lump of clay and build it up into a shape. Now already, this could be a plate you like. The rim is a little thick, but you could certainly live with it. But I'm going to go a little bit further from here and, and uh, throw the rim uh, upwards into space and then shape it outwards. Get another uh, pass over toward the... to make the floor a little bit flatter. And now that this is uh, a wall that you can get on to both sides of the outside and the inside, now this becomes uh, a throwing gesture. Very gradually up towards the rim, leaving a little bit of thickness at the rim both for look and also for strength. Here's another pass with the flexible red rib. See how it's working more smooth? The transition between the actual floor and the wall. Now I'm not quite done with the plate, but what I have found for myself is if I use this wooden corner to remove a lot of the excess mush down there at the edge of the edge of the plate, it's convenient. Moreover, it helps with trimming. If that little bottom edge is round, even though I have some trimming to do, uh, it's neater to start. And I think this is the, the final shaping for such a thing. The wall is uh, thin the way that I want, and now it can be uh, expanded out quite a bit to be the final shape. And there you have it. The, um, the other plate that was three and a half pounds, if you look vertically over, you see that the, the diameter is you know maybe two inches greater. Uh, the last thing that's going to be on your mind is the is the wire. I like to pull the wire underneath the the far inch and let that rotate a few times. And only then 
pull it underneath the entire shape. Uh, I find that sometimes the wire loosens and uh, cuts off more of the plate. Well, that's it for the four and a half pound pattern.